All right, so we decided in 2019 that we would, uh, one of our kids moved to Oregon, and we're like, you know what we should do? We should go and drive and see said kid. And then we thought, we should also see some of the national parks. And why don't we just not just see the ones that we should just take a massive road trip. So we had this massive road trip planned out for May of 2020, <laughs> which didn't happen. <laughs> so, but uh, this year it did. So we did the exact same thing. I rented our car, we packed up our stuff. I drove my rental car here for the great day of graduation and the morning after graduation, we packed it up and we left and we were gone for a solid 30 days. Mm. So, wow. we went, you have a map available to you of our route if you are interested in where we went. You got little side branches trying to indicate we went into some certain parks, but basically Amber took a bunch of gorgeous pictures and we're gonna show you uh, those. Okay. So, yeah. So we started off in this cool place. What? This is a art display. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, we went to Des Moines because we had some friends there, so we met them for dinner. And then the next morning, <laughs> the next morning we went back, there's an art park, it's called Pop Papa John? Yeah, Papa John, sculpture park in Des Moines. So it's just got a bunch of cool sculptures. So we decided to take a bunch of pictures of that. This is so in Iowa? Yeah, this they is in Des Moines. They have art in Iowa? They have art in Des Moines. Des Moines is <laughs> apparently a very liberal city. Oh. And the rest of Iowa perhaps not, but Des Moines apparently is. So. Katie, do you have a pencil at the bar? Yeah, yeah, you want to talk about that. Notes. And um, you sh I, I want to make uh, notice of this love statue. Mm -hmm. the, these statues are in a lot of locations. I'm not sure of all the locations, but I know that um, it's by Robert Indiana. And this statue is in Grand Rapids as well as Tokyo, for sure, because I've taken pictures at those mm -hmm. locations. But I don't know where else it is. I have to get to it, but so it's more than just here. She now <laughs> has photos with the love statue in three different locations and two different countries. So so then we left Des Moines, and we traveled uh, across Nebraska and Kansas. It looked kind of like that. <laughs> and we, we were on the road for a long time, we and there was no time. one. Yeah. So we so found yeah. this tree, and we, we, did. we felt <laughs> like this tree. <laughs> we did. So we did. So if you go to what's the next? Go to the next one. Okay. So here's the thing. We were, we were in Kansas. We were trying to see the world's largest ball of stamps, but it was closed, <laughs> so we could not see that. And but we did find. We heard about this Castle Rock. So we're like, okay. So we follow the directions to that. So you get off of the main highway and you go kind of down south into the wilderness and you go into a cow pasture and private property and there's this little metal sign that says Castle Rock. And, and it's because this used to be a seabed. All of Kansas used to be a seabed. Mm -hmm. And as things have eroded over time, there's a couple of piles of sedimentary rock that just haven't eroded away yet. Now this used to be taller. One of these used to be quite a bit bigger, but it fell down in the last five years. Huh. So. And then there's also the Kansas Badlands, which consists of about that. It's not very big, but it's maybe the length of MCC, but it's just a cliff with, I mean, things I didn't expect to see in Kansas, which is, yeah. you know, yeah. The previous picture with the dirt road, did you have to travel on roads? Yes. Oh yeah, so, so here's what happened. So we went to Castle Rock and then we're like, oh, they have these monument rocks too. So these are the monument rocks, not Castle Rock. I don't remember how far apart they are, but we said, Google, get us there quickly because it's going to get dark and we want to be able to see them both. <laughs> so Google took us on the most direct route, which was back dirt gravel roads where we saw nobody but the tree and yes. two deer. Yes. Right? And we see the deer yeah, there? We did. Yeah, we did. So we saw two deer and a tree yeah. for an hour and a half oh, wow. in the middle of scary. Kansas. And we were kind of scared, kind of scared. <laughs> like, um, we break down? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, nobody's coming, but, <laughs> but we made it. And then we saw these, which are also, you have to drive through a cow pasture and over the cattle grates, and there's a bunch of cow pies in this. But <laughs> like I said, this is all sedimentary rock. And I don't know if you can see, but if when you get up close, you, there's a gazillion little shells, oh. which I stole one of, of course. <laughs> so it's not a national park. <laughs> <laughs> so I, but they are beautiful. I mean, that was, they were both worth the drive. This was my favorite. That was well worth the drive. So then we moved on. Fighting the darkness, got to. Where did we get to? We stayed somewhere in Colorado. I forget the name of the city. 
tiny city. But then we had passed this on the way, so we doubled back the next morning because we wanted to see this site, which turned out that the actual site itself was closed, so we just visited sort of the, the memorial on the sign. So this is a massacre that occurred uh, due to a misunderstanding between groups and where they were supposed to be, and basically the military came in and wiped out a peaceful settlement. Um, you know, same story, different location. And then we went across, oh, we went across Colorado, across the Comanche National Grasslands, which is where, then we ended up being on the original Santa Fe Trail on our way to Santa Fe. We saw the Smokey the Bear sign, so we had to take a picture of that. <laughs> and we saw our first bunch of pronghorns. They're so cool to see it yeah. in, in, out in the wild. Yeah. This was right up near the road. Yeah, it was just chilling. And I'm like, oh, back up, back up. And I'm like, really trying to get There were a lot of those scanner. where we're driving. Yeah, and right? she said, wait, wait, wait. And I said, but we're on a highway. And she said, stop anyway. <laughs> so then I have to stop and I have to back up because she's got to get the picture. But you know, they're good pictures. So <laughs> then we got to Santa Fe. And, and this is a this was called the Pecos Pueblo. And it is right outside of Santa Fe. And it was for couple thousand years ago, it was the primary trading uh, and, and political powerhouse of that area. And it's up on a ridge. You can see everything coming. Um, and they have, this is actually a recreation. This is not original. The original is kind of rubble at this point. But this is a recreation of, of a kiva, which is an underground uh, pit that's usually used for religious ceremonies. So they let you go in that one because it's recreated, which is cool. And it's got a great library. And it's also that stuff was when the missionaries came and they built a church to try to tame uh, the natives, which <laughs> didn't go well, and the natives said, we don't appreciate it, and then they rose up and killed the missionaries and destroyed the church. So, But it's still there. Uh, and then we spent time in Santa Fe, so we went to the uh, Museum of Contemporary uh, Native Art. We saw all sorts of really cool modern art from, from this American Indian Art Institute. And this one really stood out to me. Yeah, she so I, there were many pictures of that location, but I, that was the one that... Yeah. We spent like two hours there, so, you know, we're not going to torture you with all that. And then we went to... I know is this one. This is the Loretto Chapel. So this is still in Santa Fe, Loretto Chapel. That staircase is promoted as the Miraculous Staircase. And the story is they needed a way to get people up into the balcony for the choir, but it's a very small church, so they couldn't put in a normal staircase. So the nuns prayed and prayed for someone to, because it was a female only, it was a nunnery. They prayed and prayed for somebody to come and solve their problem. And according to the story, this guy shows up and he says, I can build you a staircase. So he built this spiraling staircase, but it had no um, nails, rails. no nails, no rails, and no center post. So what holds it is the only, it's its own gravity. And that's what holds the wood together. So. They used it, but it was really scary. So a few years later, they added the railing because <laughs> the girls who were going up to sing in the choir were afraid to go up and down the steps. But but yeah, so I, I mean, in terms of its design, apparently it's very unique. And I don't know enough about woodworking to know how amazing that is, but apparently it's a big deal. And they talked about the wood being not from the region. So that was, yeah. I wasn't clear on that story, but I was like, how did you get the wood then? Yeah, they've done some tests on the wood and said, yeah, that's not local wood. So it's, it's a mysterious... It's a good story. Mysterious staircase. And then this is also in Santa Fe. This is Our Lady of Guadalupe Shrine. We were just driving by and Amber said, pictures! So. <laughs> I couldn't go in, so I was a little bummed about that. So she took a bunch of pictures. It's beautiful. I, I tend to have a theme of religious iconography in my photographs, in right. case you didn't know. <laughs> right. So, and Santa Fe, just in general, because I think we're going to be leaving Santa Fe here, is amazing if you love art and you love shopping. It's beautiful. That's about all it is, <laughs> is art and shopping. More art, like we walked in and we're like, I don't, where do you even start? I don't even know. It's overwhelming. So if you just love art and you want to do some great shopping for great art, and turn, including metalworking, art, sculpture, anything, it's an amazing place. Then we left Santa Fe and we went to Bandelier National Park, which that's sort of going into it. You go down quite a bit of cliffs. And this is, Bandelier is a valley, so this is like an original set of uh, houses, but it's a narrow valley with a little river running through it. And the, all of those cliffs are composed of volcanic ash. So old volcanoes had erupted and compressed into rock, 
but that's very soft. And so the people of that time dug a lot of houses into the hillside. So Bandelier is just a long valley with tons and tons of old housing dug into it. And this is looking into one of them, and then we could climb up. There's a several places where you can climb and go into it, so yes. it's really cool. Like we could, I don't know if you can't really tell in here, but the ceiling was black from looked like cooking or something. Mm -hmm. It was pretty interesting. There were cave paintings too. Yeah, it was it was very cool there. You can see there's a face here. And then this is a snake. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. So you could go in. They said anything with ladders you can climb up into. So, so, so Amber climbed a ladder. I did. I was so scared. <laughs> you knew it, right? And just like the one where we climbed down into the kiva, I was like. Okay, but, but can I show? Back off. <laughs> I just have to share because I love her. Everybody at that place is wearing their hiking boots and their shirts and their of jeans. And then Amber's wearing a golden kimono and <laughs> flip flops with sparkly, uh, shiny gemstones. So, but she did she climb up into all the caves? Yes. You bet that yes, she did. No, even if I'm scared of hiking. That's <laughs> right. Uh, all right. So, these, so that's what the whole valley oh, looks like that. Isn't that The amazing? whole valley looks like that. Mm -hmm. And there's there was one other extra loop. We ran out of time or we would have walked further and seen more. But Could you go into all those? <laughs> anything, no. that, anything that anything had a ladder. Because the so, oh. they've kept them, they've updated the ladders. And there was another part of the park which she was referring to, but uh, we were running out of time. And, yeah. that was and an it was a half mile hike. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I was down. But <laughs> she was ready to go. But she wasn't. So you know, because <laughs> I'm like, we are already we're off schedule. schedule. <laughs> we are off schedule. So, is is that what we're seeing the front part of that previous slide that big um the previous slide had like an area no that that's just sort of down to rubble these are what are up in the cliffs oh, and if you okay. see these all these little things mm -hmm. what they used to have were poles so they would have poles out and then buildings built in the poles so they didn't just mm -hmm. live in the cave they also had houses was, built out in the front oh, it was a the, full community it was a full community and okay. the, the entire valley was a full city basically of people um, yeah so then we left that and we drove to uh, Winslow Arizona <laughs> Stand out on the corner in Winslow, uh -huh. Arizona. So if you know your Eagles music, yeah. they have a stand out on the corner park with statues of both of the playing players. And you'll see in the background they have the painting of the girl in the Ford, and the and they Ford have is the eagle, there. and then they have a red Ford sitting out in front of the park. There's an actual Ford car, and then this was a store across the street. So it's just a whole thing. And then this is a tiny church that's just about a block down from where we were. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the world's littlest churches. So Amber had to. And it was also dedicated to all the veterans yes. who served. So I, I had to, of course, get in that church. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> and it really is a church. I mean, they have Bibles out, and they have. Yeah, that's right. So oh, yeah. It's a little it's place tiny. to take a break and worship. So that's kind of cool. So then we were driving from Winslow to Flagstaff, and we ran into this, which I just saw. I think I was on my list. It, this is where a meteor had hit, so it's meteor crater. So you're driving across flat land, and then you go way out into the desert, and then you climb up, 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 and then you go up on a ladder higher, and then you can look down, because when the meteor hit, it pushed up all the That's land right around it. That's all from a that meteor impact. It was the huge. entire crater is a meteor impact, and it's probably as big around as most, not all the campus, but probably most of the campus. Yeah, so it was pretty cool. It was very windy. It's kind of scary. Then we were driving. This is a ghost town uh, in the sense that it was once a town called Two Guns. It was also, there was a guy there who had a zoo, so this is, you can see parts of the zoo, so he had the mountain lions and all sort of critters out there in the desert. Um, it's fallen in disrepair now. This is according to the story. So this is Two Guns, and then this is right near Two Guns, and this is a, a cave where according to a story, 
uh, the Comanches and the Apaches had been battling, and the Apaches had hidden in the cave, and the Comanches realized they were in the cave, covered the cave up, and lit it on fire, and killed all of the Apaches. This is referred to as the Apache Death Cave. But uh, we did not go in. <laughs> no. Uh, you can go in. We did not go in. Then we got to the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Wait, this is our. This is the start of our TikToks. Right? <laughs> the last one was our first TikTok. <laughs> so we. I mean, it's you know. Oh, sorry, guys. It's the Grand Canyon. It's a lot. So. Okay. So we ever took some pretty pictures. I mean, it's you know, if you've ever been there, you know, it's really hard to get pictures that. This is my first time at the Grand Canyon. I lived in Arizona for six years. This is bad, and I did not see the Grand Canyon when I lived there. Was oh. your so I got to see it this time. Was so your sky good. always so clear and beautiful? Because every picture, is yes. wonderful. Yeah, we got amazing, amazing weather almost the entire trip. Yeah. And then this, so we stayed in Flagstaff, so you could drive north to Grand Canyon. And then from Flagstaff, you can also drive south to Sedona area. So this is right near Sedona, and this is a place called Montezuma Castle. This is another valley settlement, um, so, which it has nothing to do with Montezuma, and it's not a castle. They just named it that for no good reason. So it, you're just walking along the valley, and here's this. It's just up in the cliff. It, it's just there. Um, and then as you keep going down the valley, you see more of the old, where they had built-in settlements. Now they called these, this group of people, they called the Sinagua people. Uh, we called them that because there's not a lot of water, and if you speak Spanish, Sinagua is without water. We have no idea what they called themselves. <laughs> we just do that, make up names for people. And then we drove to, uh, we drove through the Red Rock Scenic Byway, which really is amazing with Red Rocks, it's very scenic. On our way to the Chapel of the Holy Cross, which is right outside Sedona. This was an originally designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, although not built by Frank Lloyd Wright uh, Chapel, and it's very small. I mean, you see that—that that was it. So it's this very small little chapel. Oh, um, cool. Some other pictures of this was from up, which we almost got trapped there because we were taking pictures. So the service we got there right before close, and then it closed, and you know people were going back to their cars because there's a windy, and we're parked down on the bottom. But we're taking really cool pictures. And then we're like, we're not paying attention to time. So then we stroll down, we get to our car, and we see all the gates shut. <laughs> we're inside. We go, hmm, what do we do now? And then one of the caretakers comes down on his bike, and I'm like, oh, can you open? Yeah, I can open it for you. I'm like, oh, God, we thought we'd be trapped in here. He's like, well, you would have been if I'd left. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> we win. <laughs> then we drove to 29 Palms. And it, on the on Route 66, near Amboy, California, which is in the middle of desert, nowhere grossness, in, let me see, I wrote it down. Somewhere around September of 2013, these two marble, these are traditional guardian lions, Chinese guardian lions. Chinese, Japanese? I think those were Chinese, but okay. it's shishi. They're, they're shishi, shishi lions. They're, they're guardians. There's a male, this one's the male. There's another one, and traditionally you put them male to the right and female to the left. If you're looking at the road, there's a male here, and about a quarter mile up the road, there's a female. Nobody knows who put them there. Nobody knows where they came from. <laughs> at one point, the female was taken away and brought back. Um, are they as big? They're they huge. are about like this. They are massive. They're just dropped off in the marble. middle of the... They are sitting in the middle nowhere. of the desert. They are huge statues. Like, I could maybe touch the top of their head. And, and at least this big. Nobody knows where they came from. Nobody knows why they're where. Travelers have now left notes. They leave rocks. They leave tokens to each other. And, and the female, somebody used her for target practice. So her, but they didn't know. Apparently this was a whole thing. They used to have a log. And they, like, he thought he was just shooting at a piece of concrete. And then he came down and saw what he did. And he wrote this whole apology note in the log saying, I had no idea. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt her. You know, but, so we found them, and then we drove on towards Amboy, which is now like a town of three people. It used to be a big boom town, but... And then this guy is there, and apparently he showed up in... He looks like he's been there forever, but I looked it up, and they said he showed up in either 2020 or 2021. Nobody knows who put him there either. And this, this statue is significantly bigger than that one. 
Yeah. It was it's huge. huge. Yeah. You see and it. I'm like, there's a golden Buddha in the middle of nowhere. And people are just leave trinkets. I mean, this is in the really, literally nothing. This is desert between Flagstaff and 29 Palms. 29 Palms is just desert. So this is in 29 Palms, and this is called the Church. What's it called? Desert Christ Park. It's just a, a whole bunch of different Jesus. It's just a whole park with a whole bunch of different Jesus statues. It's very peaceful. So it's got paths to wander through. And, and it has um, Jesus in different um, aspects and areas of his life. I didn't get them all in here, um, but it has him in different poses. Sometimes he's laying down reading. Sometimes he's sitting and pondering. I just it was appealing, so of course we went. Right, of course. It was a lot of Jeebus. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Little. It seemed like a lot of Jeebus to me, but that's just me. So, but no. It was, it, was, it was really cool. It was a lot cooler than I expected it to be. It was really cool. So then we went to Joshua Tree in the sense that we drove the scenic road through Joshua Tree. Like, we didn't spend time there. We just drove the road and took pictures. Um, and it looks a lot like that for about a half hour. <laughs> so then we... <laughs> that's us looking right. at yeah. that tree. This is, a, this is a little out of order, but that's okay. So we went to Sequoia, and we could not see all of what we wanted because, you know, my timeline <laughs> had been disrupted. Our schedule will not Our allow schedule it. did not allow it, but it did allow us to come in for a couple hours in the evening, and this is uh, Grant's Grove, so that particular tree is General Grant, which is the second largest tree in the world if you measure by cubic feet. So that's there. General Sherman, which is also in Sequoia National Park, is the largest one, but it was a different part of the park, and we didn't have time to get it. Because this you know, someone has to keep us on schedule. This is a tree root. <laughs> They yeah. had one, it, this was hollow, like you could walk all the way through from one end to the other. Yeah. And it had like a maze and trail in it. Was, yeah, it was a whole... We were walking inside the tree. Because the top is about the size of the ceiling when we were inside the tree. It was so. really cool. Yeah, it was very cool. Uh, and we also stopped at Yosemite. So this is Yosemite National Park, which is, uh, I would say, one of the more... There's a couple places we went where I looked and I said, that's not real. Like, that's a painting. It's so Like, beautiful. that's not doesn't really look like that and I see the pictures I took I'm like it doesn't really yeah it does so then we stopped and saw my dad he lives in Bakersfield so I actually saw him before the other things but he and Amber have a theme that they're guardians of the neighborhood if you're wondering what's going on here <laughs> uh, they're on patrol and they're they're threatening evildoers he, he was um, part of his association for a while yeah his homeowners he used association. to drive around on his golf cart. yeah he used to enforce the homeowners rules so <laughs> we decided we were going to yeah. patrol and Amber found a jackknife with her name on it, so she let him have so a knife. So I gave it to him so he could be the real official. And this is just my gun. That's all I got. In a, in a mean face. In a mean face. That'll enforce those HOA rules. Yeah. So then we were, so we actually stopped there first. We did Sequoia, we did Yosemite, and then we went up. This is outside of Stockton, California, where they have a um, Cambodian Buddhist temple. And it's massive. Yeah, I it, mean, this is me standing. Acreage. Yeah, oh compared to that, that gives you scale. I mean, because these are huge. Yeah, look at that telephone. Every single, yeah, every yeah. single one. They're um, massive. Massive. It was beautiful. There. It's like about an acre, at least, of these massive statues. So it was very cool. Very serene. Unexpected, right outside of Stockton, which isn't a super artsy place. And then we drove north through California to, uh, to Weed. Which is right on the border. Weed, California's the last town you hit before you hit Oregon. So we got the weed. We went to the weed store, which is where I bought my weed T-shirt that some of you have seen me wear. But Are also you wearing where it they to campus. I did. Yeah, they don't sell weed at the. Weed oh. store. No, they did not. Which is disappointing. It's, it's and they, this random totem pole. The whole reason we stopped in weed is because I heard there was this totem pole. Because I looked up random stupid stuff to look at. <laughs> But then we were happened to, and so we saw the weed store and stopped there and bought some, you know, they sell little t-shirts and whatever. But they told us, they said, if you pay attention on the road out, there is this sculpture park. Oh. Oh. And it is called officially, what's it called? The Living Memorial Sculpture Park. Yeah. And it is, you drive, it's a, it's a veterans tribute. You drive in, there's sort of a wall with names, and then you can go over to sort of a central... Oh uh, I forget which one's the central sculpture. So, but then there's spikes radiating out, and so you walk 
not very far, maybe an eighth or a quarter of a mile, but each statue is in its own little space. So it's, it's very private, it's very quiet, um, very powerful. So if you are ever near there. It was a war statue. You know, they, they did this part for the POWs, and this was for the nurses, and this is for the, the people who came home and how they tried to integrate back into society. And that's the wounded warrior and then, one. And you know, the mothers and the wives. The loss, yeah loss and they just received this flag it was so it's very it powerful. was very moving yeah. Yeah. It's very it's very moving. powerful and we would never have heard of it if we had not stopped at the weed store and <laughs> so that was i was glad that we did so who, who takes care of it then i don't there's a group it's, it's a veterans, not a veterans group. group that yeah. that is on board with it now but yeah. i think the the um the artist was a single artist mm -hmm. and i think he started this and then other people yeah. Is it and there's stone? also there's it, lots yeah, of, it's, it's metal it's metal, it's metal. Oh, okay mm -hmm. there are also lots of graves there so I'm, I'm guessing veterans can choose to be buried on that property because we found quite a few veterans uh, graves and memorials there we finally got to redmond which is where our kids were so we visited the kids there's a cave system in redmond you can just kind of walk in and we didn't have real light so we didn't walk in very far but you can just kind of walk in these they're uh, old lava tubes is what they are because redmond's a volcanic area so Lava went through, left some caves. You can walk in and walk around. Um, and then this is called Cinder Butte, which is actually an old cinder cone from some of the volcanic activity that our son wanted us to go. He's, he kind of tricked us. He kind of tricked us. It, the, the road goes around and around. And um, of course, I wasn't wearing white shoes. And we <laughs> <laughs> well, he said, you can drive to the top. He said, we can drive, but you can't drive. Well, the gate was closed. So we had to walk. But then he said, when we were like a quarter of the way there, oh, we're almost there. Uh, it's only, uh, we're three quarters uh, of the way. We might as well just do it. And he just kept talking. And then we keep walking. He's like, oh, did I, I say three room. quarters? I meant yeah. one quarter. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> but we made it to the top, and I was grateful because we did get to see that's cool. this. That's but, cool. And had he not pushed us. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all old lava flow from the cinder cone that we were on. Whoa. It was out, I mean, the whole, the whole area is. And this is one of the three sisters, I believe, mm -hmm. okay. that yep. you can see from the top. Okay. Yeah. And then this is, oh, this is just driving. Uh, so we drove from Redmond to Boise. And so this is just Eastern Oregon. And not most of it's, that drive is not exciting. It was beautiful. But this particular little area where you're driving along a creek bed is just amazing. It's, it was just beautiful. We stayed up the night in Boise. And then we had heard about this. So we decided to go to downtown Boise. And this is a alley, it's one whole cross street. So you have like a main sort of food eatery, no traffic -y thing. And then you have this cross street and they started doing basically art competitions starting in 2002, uh, outdoors on the, on the walls. So the entire alley is coated with different art. And the, the entire, it's up and down on both sides. So it's just pretty cool. Then we got to West Yellowstone, so that's just a, they have a couple painted bison statues. We stayed in the one horse motel. <laughs> Why? I'm cheap. <laughs> I well, let me tell you though, it if was you want to stay in West Yellowstone, it is extraordinarily expensive. But the one horse motel is not. And it is very clean. It is. It was immaculate. <laughs> it was very clean. Like I I I was so impressed. And they yeah. had so a few people because of COVID. Right. Um, that I, they were, I was surprised they got to hang on because yeah. it was a hard one but they're for a like lot of people. Ninety bucks a night, yeah. which gets you a room with cinder block walls and you know, a, and a space heater. Yeah. But uh, it was perfectly comfortable and it was very clean. So, so then we got to go to Yellowstone. This was our first. That was our first bison sighting. <laughs> and then oh. this, I don't remember what it all oh is. My this is the West Thumb of Yellowstone. Those are uh, some of the Grand Teton range in the distance. Mm -hmm. And this is more of the West Thumb. This is a place called the Black Pool, where it's just a deep uh, pool. And then. I don't know if this is going to work. So. We'll find out. Yeah. We shall see. If we have to log in, we have to log in. If we have to log in, we don't get to watch the video more accurately. Uh, do you have to log in? Yes, I do, and I uh, cannot. She doesn't know it. I'm okay. sorry. That's okay. So we, we grabbed a couple of videos, but when you go into Yellowstone, if you choose to go through Yellowstone, I mean, it's a very old park, 
and you go in and the entire, there's a loop around the park, but it's all just two-way traffic, 45 mile an hour traffic, and they can't widen the roads. And the, the, the visiting there now is overwhelming. So we lucked out in terms of numbers, not very number, many numbers. But it's the Bison's Park. So if they choose to use the roadway, you wait. So on the way out the first day, miles. We're going out on the first day and we're like, is this just exit traffic? Like they need better control. No, there was a bison herd that happened to be strolling across the road and we sat in our car literally for an hour waiting to get past the herd. I'm sorry. And you can get in a lot of trouble if you get out and try to make a move. No, yeah, you cannot make a move. And you can get hurt. anyway. Right. They'll hurt you. So what we had video of is one of the days going in, there was one car ahead of us and there's these three bulls and they're just strolling down the road. That car got too close and I saw him turn around and then he turned around for real and they're like, okay, okay, okay. okay. So they got past them and then we had them walking right in front of us. So she'd taken some video where they're just moseying, moseying. <laughs> and we're just slowly, and there was a ranger there and we said, can we pass? And he's like, just go with the same pace. If they get to the center line or over, so they finally got, so we got to go past them. I was very scared. She was laughing at me. <laughs> he, their, their shoulders are this big. Yeah, they're it was huge. kind of scary, but I was nervous. And she's in a rental car. I mean, come it on. was a rental car, right? <laughs> I mean, all he had to do was toss his head a little bit. Anyway, so then we took an afternoon and drove into the Grand Teton National Park. Then we drove out. I mean, we spent two hours. Yeah. Yes. We just did a loop. Uh, this was my favorite part. This, this is, is the great. Grand. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. This Grand Prismatic mm -hmm. Spring. It was beautiful. Yeah. We learned that you could also go up. You could take a, a, a circle around and you could hike and get to the top and look from above. But right. we didn't end up doing that because um, when we were on the same level, you could just see these colors and the rainbow of the colors of the mist. And it was beautiful. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was one of my favorites in the park. The other one was the at the end where we saw the. You for that. Yeah. Yeah. Mammoth. Yeah, Mammoth Hot Springs. Yeah. Ma here we are. Yeah. Wow. And Mammoth Hot Springs. Yeah. That was amazing. And that is just all of those levels are just from. There's a hot spring that runs out, and as it pools, the minerals deposit, and then it will flow to the next one. And then you can see some of it has been bleached white. Whenever the water stops going there, all the bacteria give it the color. So once the water's gone, the bacteria can't live there anymore and it just bleaches white. So it just keeps finding new little paths and keeps making these new little uh, ledges. And so yeah, it's just we spent a great deal of time <laughs> in. When you come upon it, there are swallows in this part. Um, they've made their home there and they are just everywhere. Yeah. And it was beautiful. It was, yeah, it was And amazing. then you can hear the water, like it's just constantly trickling. In. Can you go in the water? You, it's hot. Oh, you can't touch it. You yeah. can't touch it. No, so you, you ought not touch it. Um, there was a bird that was getting in it and drinking, so it can't be that hot. But oh. Depends on where you no, are. No, the rule with Yellowstone is anytime they say don't touch or stay on the path, you really need to do that mm -hmm. because they've had at least a couple people in the last few years get third degree burns. Mm. Because it looks solid, but it's really just a mat of bacteria. So sometimes you will think you can walk and you will go straight through and it's 170, 180 degree water. And sometimes it's acidic. Yeah, Correct. sometimes it's acidic. Correct. Part of you that way too. Right. Correct. Right. Yeah. Huh. So then we went to, we stayed in, we left Wellstone, stayed in Billings, and then we drove to Little Bighorn National Monument, which is in, uh, I think, Montana, still over there. And there, there is a monument to Custer. This used to be Custer's last stand, but they've renamed it. Uh, we were not interested in the monument to Custer, but we were very interested in the, the newish monument, and I forget when they put it up, for the Native Americans that fought there too. Because for a long time they were just completely ignored as part of that story because it was all about, you know, Custer. And so they have this really cool monument there uh, for them. Then we drove to Sheridan, Wyoming, and saw someone, some of you know, <laughs> um, went out to dinner with them, and then we drove Aww. through the night. Uh, to get to, that was sunset. She made me pull over for that. I'm like, we are late and there are elk and I am not driving at night. She said, did you look at that? <laughs> it was a beautiful sunset. We saw many beautiful sunsets. So I said, okay. Uh, so then we were in Black Hills. So we went to Mount Rushmore for a couple hours. And then we went to Crazy Horse National Monument. 
which is one of my, so this is, this is still, if you're not familiar with Crazy Horse, this is still in progress. This eventually is going to become this. They have been working on this since the 1960s. Mm -hmm. uh, they have his head done. They refuse to take federal funding. So this is all donations and charitable funding because they, when they originally did it, they did not want the government. This is kind of their big screw you to the government because you know Black Hills were very sacred to the native tribes and they had a treaty saying that people would stay out of them and then they found gold and then they ignored the treaty and then they overran it. And then they built a monument to our leaders in the middle of it, right. which was particularly offensive. So they decided they would build a monument to one of their great leaders, which just for scale, all of Mount Rushmore can fit right about here. Whoa. So this is going to be the largest mountain sculpture ever uh, when it's done. What's the picture in the, this, yeah, what is that? This is a, the guy who did the sculpture was also an artist and he dedic he and his family, it's now generations of his family that are dedicated to this work, uh -huh. but they also have a art uh, gallery and he made all these, these That's are just cutouts too. of the, the local wildlife, okay. flora and fauna, I guess. And then these are some pictures from inside the museum and the Crazy Horse. The uh, museum's display. huge. Yeah, it's huge. They have a huge museum there dedicated to Native American art. Hmm. And to the guy who was doing this. So oh, some cool. of the quotes are from you know Native tribes. And then they have a whole sub-area that's just dedicated to the life of the guy, whose name I forget, uh, who started the sculpture. And then in Hot Springs, there's this place called the Mammoth Site, where they found uh, this used to be a a sinkhole, warm pool, and apparently what happened is it was nice warm water and there was lots of grass on the side, so the mammoths would come and they would eat the grass and then they would fall in and it was too steep and too high for them to get out. So they had, they have it found at least 60 wow. mammoth carcasses here. So they excavated it, but this is all inside an enclosed building and they left a lot of them in the They built the building earth. around the excavation. Yeah, they, they just built a building yeah. around it. Cool. So it, it's really cool. Huh. Then we drove uh, the best part of wall drug are the signs alerting you to wall drug. <laughs> so, I mean, wall drug's a thing, but the signs were really the best. What is it? It is a drug store. Well, it was a drug store <laughs> that originally was, they made money because they said, oh, we can sell ice water to the people who are traveling. So it became a major stop. And then it expanded. And then it expanded. And now it is like a, a, tourist a massive section. block tourist trap, trinkets, food. They have everything. 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 And can... they advertise it for about 100 miles in each direction. There's there's a sign in my hometown. About Wall Drug? Yes. How many, how many miles to Wall Drug? I don't know what it was. Well, yeah. yes. It's like, you know. I don't remember how many miles it says. I passed it a million times. Right, right. But yeah, that they just, and so they got famous for their promotion and they do, you get free donuts, you get, it's just, it's insane. It's, it's, it's insane, insane there. And it's a total tourist trap. It is a complete yes. tourist trap. Like, yeah, it is, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we, but we did it. <laughs> and then we went through the Badlands. We just did the scenic driveway through the Badlands National Park, which is right outside of Waldrug. Red Cross, really across the, you leave Waldrug, go across the street, and you get into the entrance of the Badlands. So again, that's just erosion. Right, in the Badlands. And then as we finished our drive across South Dakota, we were trying to get here in daytime, but we couldn't make it. But this is a statue that is, I mean, you can see the, the city lights behind her. Um, I want to say a couple hundred feet high, but I'm, I'm bad with, it's a very big, it's, and her title is Dignity, and it is a tribute to the Native Americans of that region. We were gonna stop there and take pictures in the it's morning. It's like a truck stop. Yeah, huh. yeah, it's just there, but it's up on a hill, so you can see her from a distance, and I'm sure in the daytime you can see it from a long ways. It's probably really cool. There was also a baby church there as well. Oh, yeah, little, yeah, there was a, a little, little tiny one-room thing. But, yeah, so we were going to stay there, but they didn't have, here's what we learned. Now it was June, and now it was vacation time, and this is the main strip between um, Black Hills and here, and so all the rooms were sold out. And so then we went to the next town, and all those rooms were sold out. Oh, no. And so then we went to the next town, and we found one. Oh, no. So that was exciting. But, that was exciting. Yeah. That was pretty much. And then, that's pretty much it. And then the next day we woke up in South Dakota, and we drove all the way across Iowa and oh. came home uh, with the only notable event being we did get to see the world's largest popcorn ball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if yeah, you care about that. that, it's in Sauk City, uh, Iowa. Not very exciting, not very photogenic, but, but technically. But there's a little town behind it. Yeah, they have a little mini old 1800s it, it, town. And it yeah. has little, uh, everybody's little off, 
you know, from right. barber shops and post office and yeah. church. Uh -huh. and so if you're ever in Sauk City, City, there's something to look at. <laughs> but yeah, that's that was pretty much it. <laughs>